So we've talked about liquid fuel rockets, which are probably the most common type. The other type of rocket that's used is solid fuel. So how's that different? So the difference here is instead of having a mixture of oxygen with some sort of oxidizer, you, you kind of have something that's more combined. And when we say solid, we're not talking about putting rocks in the thing, right? We're talking about something that is uh, a, a liquid or a gas, but can be very easily burnt as one process. And in fact, you have your layers of your solid oxidizer in this case, um, or your solid propellant. You ignite it and you actually slow burn it, fuel it. So it's more like a, a candle rather than a gasoline. Yes, yeah, so you're talking about, it's, I mean, we're all familiar with this like fireworks. Exactly. In that case, it's gunpowder inside these things. That's right. Uh, which contains the oxidizer with everything else. And the, these things look more like a putty or plasticine or something like that. Yeah, that's right. They're more gel-like, yes. Yes. So basically, you've taken probably the same sort of chemicals we're talking about before. But that's right. Also, you have more of a choice if you make it solid. Yep. Um, in one sense, it's easier to handle because you don't need tanks and exactly. pumps. And uh, coolings and all those sorts of things. And you just have whatever mix of oxidizer and together in a solid form. You build the whole thing and then light the touch paper and stand back. That's right. So in fact, you have noticed it's a little bit simpler. At the end, it's the same process. You want your thrust out. You want your energy out. You can get different mixtures. Because you can get different mixtures, you can also get different densities. So one of the reasons why people like solid rockets is you can get higher amounts of energy per kilogram of fuel even if it's the kind of the same stuff you can pack it in a little bit more into a denser ratio yes yeah, so the energy per kilogram is the same but the energy per cubic meter exactly is going to be much higher so your rocket's going to be more compact that's right and that saves you mass because you've got a very large rocket you can have large bits of metal around the outside to hold it all in so and if you save mass that means you're getting more energy out relative to what you're putting at and so people get this appeal of solid rockets. So again, you have your fuel, which is this mixture, this gel-like. You have to then, the difference here is instead of having a very small part that is combining the two liquids into a chamber, you actually have to start the flame essentially in the middle of the rocket. So you're kind of letting the, the propellant burn through, again, slowly and controlled, because if you ignite it all, rocket goes boom, but you want to slow burn through the propellant and again, it coming out the nozzle, leaving out is creating thrust. Yes, no. which is a plus and a minus because you 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 don't need the pumps. That's right. The mixers, there's lots of complexity you're getting rid of. That's right. The trouble is once you light this, you can't turn it off. Exactly. So if you need to abort because something is going wrong, you can turn off your liquid fuel rocket. That's right. You can't turn this off once it's lit. <laughs> once it's lit, it's lit. That's right. It's like a firework. Once you turn on your firework, you can't stop it mid firework. Whereas at least with the liquid ones, you can douse it, you can stop it, you can adjust the nozzles and, and that's it. So there's lots of different benefits and safeties. Now, as we talked about with liquid rockets, because you're just mixing oxygen with the hydrocarbon, you can do it on Mars, you can do it on the moon, you can do it anywhere. You're only gonna really be able to create these on Earth because that's the only place we really have the manufacturing capability to do this. That's right, and uh, so are these actually used? So, so they are, and in fact, what that's often happened is they're used with liquid rockets. In fact, the space shuttle is a great example of this. The two white rocket boosters here are called solid rocket boosters. They were called SRBs because solid rocket booster. They like to name it like they see it. And because you're able to pump a lot more energy density, this did that very first initial lifting. Now, the second stage of the rocket was actually then this giant tank. So this giant tank is just a big tank of liquid fuel. And the fuel from there is pumped into the engines in the actual shuttle orbiter. That's right. So there's no actual nozzles on the bottom of that big tank. That's right. You often tell the difference when you see a takeoff because yes. the solid rocket boosters, they glow like crazy when they they're do. coming out the back. So the That's brightness right. you're seeing here, the dazzling brightness, it is, is yeah. the solid rocket boosters. The, the actual rockets coming out of the back of the space shuttle are very hard to see in comparison. But that, yeah. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a faint blue glow, but you're just blinded by the, the light coming out from a solid rocket booster. So if you see a rocket taking off and there's light and brightness everywhere, that's probably solid. If it looks much more sedate and a faint blue color, then it's, it's burning hotter. Yep. And that uh, doesn't have so many solid particles to emit the radiation, so many complicated reactions to make it glow yellow. That's right. And that will be a, a liquid. Exactly. And, and so as you, if you've ever saw a space shuttle take off, the rocket boosters would attach these ones 
quite relatively early because again, it's only going up 10, 20 kilometers. That's it. But that's enough where you've actually lifted enough that now you have enough in your tank to carry you through. You don't ha need as much lift, but you also just need uh, enough to get you into orbit. And so this tank will take the space shuttle all the way into orbit and away you go. Now, nowadays, if we don't have the space shuttle, a lot of these rockets have three stages. They have a solid first stage, liquid second stage, and usually a liquid third stage. Often the solid rockets do a lot of the heavy lifting beginning, but people are finding other ways of doing only liquid rockets. NASA's new space launch system. It has some solid boosters on the outside. It does. And but the SpaceX uh, rockets are entirely liquid. That's right. They use a mixture of liquid and methane. So there's lots of benefits and it's all about how much energy you can get, how much weight can you carry and support, and cost. These are the three principles pretty much of space. Weight, energy, and cost.